Your bad vibrato is making you sound like ass. I'm Ben Eller, and this is why you suck at playing guitar. Bad vibrato ruined lives. It's true. I once saw Gary Moore sever the arm of another guitar player using his heat ray vision simply for playing a note with gross shrill vibrato in front of him. That could be you if you're not careful. It makes sense that a lot of us have terrible vibrato when you consider that hardly anybody practices it, you know? We'll sit down with a metronome and work on our alternate picking, our sweet picking or whatever, but hardly anybody sits down and practices vibrato exclusively. And I don't care how fast you can get up and down the neck and shred this thing up, if you land on a note and apply this gross, shrill vibrato that sounds more annoying than Gilbert Gottfried covering a kid's bop album, you sound like you don't know what you're doing. So today you're going to spend some time here with old Uncle Ben, and I'm going to help you turn your vibrato from the shrieking wail of Yoko Ono to the soothing tones of Nora Jones in no time. We're going to explore the four most commonly used types of vibrato, finger vibrato, wrist vibrato, your mom's favorite, side-to-side -side vibrato, and the rarely seen circular vibrato technique. I'm also going to hit you with some tips and tricks to improve your sound no matter what style you're using. Let's go ahead and dig in and start looking at finger vibrato first. This technique is the easiest one to implement into our guitar playing, so this is where most of us start off. Unfortunately, it's also the easiest one to completely butcher and make your guitar sound like a cat being slammed in a door. So let's look at how you can add a little finesse to your finger vibrato. Okay, here's the idea. Simple enough to get. All that you do to execute finger vibrato is start off by fretting a note. Like let's say the 5th fret G string. And fret it with the fingertip, as is tradition. And then either rapidly pull it towards the floor over and over. <laughs> do that by contracting the finger. It's kind of like a scratching motion like this. Or you could think about Danny and the Shining, Red Rum. And just repeatedly pull the string towards the floor. Alternatively, you could push the string upwards towards the ceiling like this. I execute that by gripping the note and then slightly straightening the finger over and over. That's the basic idea. Now, whether you pull down on the string or push upwards on it makes no effect to the sound. A string doesn't know down from up. It doesn't know if it's being pulled down or pushed up. All that it knows is that it's being stretched. And whenever a string gets stretched, the pitch goes up. Check this out. I'll go down. I'll go up. The sound isn't any different either way. The string doesn't know. Only thing you have to be considered about is where on the neck you are. Because obviously, if I'm on a high E string, I can't really pull down very much without yanking the string over the edge of the fretboard like that. So if I'm on my high E string and I'm doing finger vibrato, I have to push up. Conversely, if you're on the low E string, you can't really push that guy upwards without going over the edge of the fretboard. So you have to pull down on that one always. Now most guitar players will find that they get a better grip and a stronger sound by pulling down on the string. That's because our fingers are stronger contracting than they are expanding. So generally, wherever you can, try pulling down and you'll get a stronger sound out of it. The real advantage of this technique is you can get to it from any position, whether it be your low thumb, classical shredder position, your high thumb, kind of blues grip position. I've even seen people get to this from reverse cowgirl position. So this is the easiest of the vibrato techniques to implement into your guitar playing, but it's also the easiest one to completely butcher. Anytime I'm in Guitar Center and I hear some kid whose vibrato is so bad that it makes my spleen hurt, he's typically using very crappy finger vibrato. So here's the problems most people have and how you can fix them. Generally speaking, most people's biggest issue with finger vibrato is that they just do it too fast. <laughs> Sounds awful. With finger vibrato, we're really limited in our range of motion. It tends to produce a very narrow sound. What I mean by that is that the changes in pitch that we get are very small, and it's because we're limited to how much you can wiggle a string up and down while still keeping a good grip on it. You can't really move the string around too much without losing your grip and losing the string like that. So typically, this kind of vibrato tends to produce a very narrow change in pitch. 
a small change in pitch executed at really fast speeds starts to sound like a mosquito or Stevie Nicks, and nobody in the right mind likes either of those things. So if you want to instantly make your finger vibrato sound better, just take it easy and try to produce a more smooth, mellow sound like that. The only person out there that cares about how fast you can wiggle your finger is your pervert cousin. You see, cousin is a gender neutral term, so that joke's funny to everybody. Except maybe people without cousins. The other problem people typically have with their finger vibrato is that they're just not moving the string around enough. Like I said, this technique tends to produce a very shallow sound because we're limited by the range of motion of how much we can wiggle our finger while keeping a grip on the string. So how you're going to get a lot more depth and control out of your finger vibrato is by simply piling a little bit more weight onto the string. How you're going to do that is by using the buddy system. Here's what I mean. Never let one finger just wiggle that string on its own like this. Take any unused fingers that are behind the fretted note and pile them on top of the string. So like right now, I'm playing the fifth fret G string here with my middle finger, right? So my pointer finger's back here doing nothing. I'm gonna put him to work by piling his weight on top of the string. It doesn't have to be in any particular spot. It doesn't have to be a fret down or an inch away or whatever, it doesn't matter. What you're gonna do is put that weight on the string and make those two fingers work in unison, like this. You're instantly going to get a lot more depth and control out of your finger vibrato sound just because you got two guys on the job instead of just one. If you really want to lay it to it, fret a note with your ring finger, and then again, the unused fingers, the middle finger, the index finger, just pile them on the string, make them all work together to move that string around a little bit. You'll instantly get a lot more depth and control to your finger vibrato sound with that technique. Now next we're going to talk about wrist vibrato. This technique is definitely the hardest one to master, but it's totally worth it. Because every time you've heard a guitar player with a really deep, wide vibrato, like Marty Friedman or Stevie Ray Vaughan, this is probably the technique they're using. Like I said, it's tricky, but it's totally worth it. Here's the idea. With wrist vibrato, the fingers don't do anything. All the fingers are there to do is to grip the string and push it in against the fretboard. So the fingers aren't wiggling or contracting or expanding at all. They're just gripping. From there, the string is actually moved around by moving the wrist in a side-to-side -side motion. Like that. So like I said, the fingers aren't wiggling at all. It's all in the wrist. The actual motion that you use whenever you're shaking that wrist around is kind of like this. If you can't place what that reminds you of, go ask your mom about it. She said it's kind of like shaking dice before you roll them, right? Kind of is. Also equate it to kind of your surfer, cowabunga, 90s dude like this too. It's a good way to look at it. To get the most out of this technique, you gotta know the right position to be in to use it. So let's break this down and look at it here. Most lesson videos do a really bad job of explaining this, so I'm gonna try to break this down for you guys and make it usable. What I want you to do to start off with is to give your neck a proper handshake like this right here. I've got my thumb straight up, I've got my fingers straight out, exactly like this. What I want you to do is to just slap that on the back of the neck of your guitar. You can see I've got my palm set at kind of a 90 degree angle to the neck right here. You know, it's just going straight down. This creates a couple of different points of contact with the neck of the guitar. The thumb is up here just sitting on the top, resting. Thumb doesn't do a lot here. It contributes about as much to this as those clowns who hit trash cans and slip knots. Not very much at all. It's not going to be tightening. It's not going to be wiggling around. Thumb doesn't really do anything. Next point of contact is going to be the neck resting in that web of skin between your thumb and index finger right here. Especially if you're playing a guitar with a fat neck, like a Les Paul or a Strat or something, you'll probably end up with the neck sitting right there. That's totally okay. Uh, I play these skinny necked Ibanez things, so I don't really make a lot of contact there. That's fine too. The only one of these that really does matter is this guy, the side of the index finger knuckle. So in other words, here's the index finger knuckle, the side of it right here. That needs to be resting right up there against the edge of the neck. This, create what's, this creates what I call the door hinge position. Whenever I'm doing this kind of vibrato, it reminds me of a door swinging on a hinge just like that. If you could just imagine opening and closing a door. That's what makes this all happen. Now. Like I said, whenever you're doing this kind of technique here, your fingers simply grip the note. They don't wiggle around or wrench the string at all. All that happens is we grip the note and twist that wrist to make the string move downwards 
or upwards like that. Here's how you're going to do it. Okay, this door hinge position puts up a pretty extreme range of motion from door open to door closed. You'll never really use any of those extreme positions. So once the door is open, you can't open it more. Once the door is closed, you can't close it more. All the good stuff happens in the middle. So what I want you to do to get a feel for this technique here is just to imagine again, here's door open, here's door closed. Open the door about halfway. That's our starting position. You can see how this puts my palm at a diagonal angle coming off of the neck. You know, it's not that 90 degree angle. It's just about halfway like that. Here's the deal. From this position, you can grip a note. Like I'm going to grab my fifth fret G string here with my middle finger. Again, here's that buddy system, just like we did with our finger vibrato here. I'm going to grip this down and then I can either pull the string downwards to the floor by simply opening the door a little bit, swinging off that door hinge like this. Or I can push the string upwards by closing the door. Just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Again, all that I'm doing here is holding my hand at this diagonal angle like this and slightly pushing it away to pull the string down or slightly pulling it forward, closing the door to push the string upwards. So if I was on my high E string, for example, I would have to push upwards because again, we'd run out of room and go over the edge of the neck. That's the real ticket with this technique. Now, if that's not clear enough, let me put it to you this way. Start off with your diagonal angle, grab a note, fifth fret G is what I'm on. And if it helps you visualize this a little bit more, here's what I want you to imagine. Imagine trying to move the knuckle of your little finger, this guy right here. Imagine trying to push that knuckle away from you. That's gonna produce your downward vibrato. <laughs> to produce your upwards vibrato, Imagine trying to bring that knuckle towards you. Again, I'm swinging off the furthest point of the hand right here. I'm swinging off of this part, bringing it up towards me over and over to make my upward vibrato. You can get a ton of range and control using this technique. This is why so many guys use it. Especially if you grip with the ring finger, you can really wrench that string back and forth a lot. Really rapidly opening and closing that door to get a really wide, powerful vibrato. Or you can control it and reel it in and do something really subtle just by wiggling the door on that hinge a little like that. Get a great tone this way. Up next, we're going to talk about side to side vibrato. Now, this style is kind of like your weird Uncle Kenny with the glass eye, you know? Rarely seen in public but mysterious and intriguing. Whenever it's done well, like you'll hear from fusion dudes like Alan Holdsworth, it has a really deep kind of chorusy sound to it. It sounds great. But whenever you do it really badly, it can sound more disgusting than vomit hitting pavement. So let's look at how to add a little finesse to your side to side action. So the idea with this style of vibrato is that the changes in pitch are not produced by moving the string up and down. There's no wiggling around of the string at all. The changes in pitch are produced by fretting the note with good pressure and then shifting the weight of the hand side to side like this. That changes the pitch. Check it out. There's not any sliding going on here. I'm not sliding my finger around the fret box like this. I'm on my 10th fret B string here. If I just kind of bonk around in between those two fret wires, it doesn't really change the pitch very much. The best way I can describe what I'm doing here is pushing and pulling my finger pressure on the note. Here's the idea. Fret a note, like let's say that 10th fret B string here with your middle finger. Pile your pointer finger on back here for extra weight on the string to make the effect more pronounced. Now what you're going to do is fret really firmly, and then the best way I can describe it here is to push the weight of your hand towards the headstock. Hear how that made the note go sharp? Again, the fingertip isn't sliding around at all. I'm more or less pivoting off the finger, like that right there. You can see the tip doesn't really move. I'm just pivoting, pushing the weight of my hand towards the headstock. Coming back from that, you can also pull the string a little bit. So in other words, from the fretted note, I tried to imagine pulling the string towards my body. Like that. 
those two combined make a really deep vibrato sound. So again, I fret, I push, I pull, profit. The more finger weight you can get on here, the better. So if you can fret a note with your ring finger, pile those two onto there, and do that side to side push pull action, you get a really deep wavy chorusy effect. The more weight, the more power. I think Oprah said that. Meow kids, here's the coolest thing about this style of vibrato. You can bust it out from any position, whether that be your low thumb shredder style, or your high thumb blues style, missionary or whatever, you can bust it out any time. And you can do it on any string. Because since you're not pulling the string down or up, it doesn't matter how close to the edge of the fretboard are, you can always move side to side and get some pretty dramatic sounds. Only thing is, it doesn't sound especially great on the low strings. It just doesn't really make that much of a difference down there. So this is primarily more of a high string, you know, like your unwound strings, your G, B, and E kind of techniques. So think about that. Here's the coolest thing though. There's something about this technique that makes it different from our other styles of vibrato. Okay, with our other forms, our finger and our wrist, all that we've heard is the note starting off at neutral and then going slightly sharp over and over. Or, you know, it starts here, it goes up, it comes back, whatever. The cool thing about this side-to-side -side vibrato is, if you're doing it right, you'll hear the note go slightly sharp and slightly flat. Check this out. Whenever I'm gripping the note, I've got my 10th fret B string here, I'm going to grip with my ring finger for extra weight, throw my others on behind it here. If I push it towards the headstock down there, you'll hear the note go slightly sharp. Listen to this. So it raises up and pitch a little bit. Now, if I pull the string towards me, just imagining I'm yanking it from the headstock, listen, the note will go slightly flat. Very slightly. It's almost like giving the note just a really subtle dip with the old whammy bar, you know? So this is something that we can't do with our other techniques. We hear the note go up and down. So you can choose to either make it go exclusively sharp by pushing, like a standard vibrato sound, exclusively flat by pulling, or you can swing both ways, much like your Uncle Kenny. One of my favorite things about this style of vibrato is that you can apply it to entire chords, too. This is straight out of Alan Holdsworth's playbook. You've heard him do this a million times if you've ever listened to him. The idea is that you fret a chord, preferably one with a bunch of huge numbers in the name of it, fret it, and then give the hand the good old side to side, again, pushing and pulling the entire hand like this. It gives the entire chord this really deep, chorusy, wavy sound. Sounds very expensive. The last kind of vibrato Uncle Ben's gonna show you today here is the rarely seen circular vibrato technique, which is employed pretty much exclusively by Steve Vai. He's basically the only guy that does it. You might as well own the patent on it. I've not really spent a lot of time working on this. Uh, I come dangerously close to ripping off Steve Vai in all ways anyway, so I figure why make it obvious, you know? So I pretty much just leave this to him. But here's the idea. Uh, you grip a note, you know, again, multiple fingers, more weight the better. And then the fingertips don't really wiggle the string around like finger vibrato. They just grip, kind of like what we did with wrist vibrato. And from there, you're going to guide the fingertip into a circular motion using your entire forearm like this. Again, this is really powerful because you're basically using your larger muscles here. You're not using your teeny tiny finger muscles or your medium sized wrist muscles. You're using your very large size elbow forearm muscles. So you get a lot of control out of this and if you work on it. If you take the note in a very small circle, you get a very subtle effect. Whereas if you take it in a larger circle, it gets more pronounced. You kind of get the best of both worlds with this one right here. Because you kind of get that, uh, you know, up and down, detune-y, sharp flat sound like you get with the side to side, since your finger is moving across the fret distance as well as the more traditional rock and roll, up and down kind of sound. So you kind of get the best of both worlds here just by making a circle with the finger. Now your Aunt Julie told me that she likes some kind of trick where you like take it and you make different shapes in the alphabet. Like, like you could do like A, 
Yeah. And then like B and C. At least I think she was talking about vibrato. Hmm. And now for a couple of quick pro tips here to improve your vibrato, no matter which technique you're using. Follow my advice and your stepdad might actually start giving you an allowance. All right, here's a problem. Noisy ass vibrato, right? Especially if you're moving the string really vigorously with finger vibrato or wrist vibrato, your fingers end up bonking the adjacent strings and it sounds them out. And you bring disgrace upon your family by doing that. Here's how you're gonna fix that. Okay, let's say you're giving the G string here a good wiggle, just like your mom likes. I'm gonna be shaking that guy up and down pretty vigorously. Now, if I'm doing that upwards, I'm gonna bonk that D string and make it sound out. It sounds terrible. What I'm gonna do to prevent that from happening is simply mute it with the right hand, with the picking hand. If you've watched my sweet picking video, as you all have, you're familiar already with the progressive palm muting idea, the idea that whatever string we're playing, we palm mute back here with the picking hand above those strings. Apply that here. If I'm playing the G, go ahead and palm mute the E, A, and D strings to keep them quiet. So that solves half of our problem. Now I can bonk up against that D string and it doesn't sound out. But there's still this B string ringing out, right? The one underneath my finger. That can be kind of annoying. You got two options here. You can either try to fret a little flatter so that the underside of either of your fingers or just one of your fingers or three of your fingers or whatever is touching that string just a little bit. Again, here that string's dead. That's just because the underside of my finger is touching it just a little bit. So now whenever I shake that note, you're not hearing that B string getting knocked around. Another option is two. Okay, it's a right hand trick. If I'm fretting that note and I'm picking it, and the sound of that B string out. There it is. You can simply use some of your unused fingers here and touch those strings. That's it. Just a little contact is all that it takes to keep that completely silent. So now I can smack up against that B string as much as I want to and you'll never hear it because I'm just keeping it quiet over here. Again, I'm using my middle finger just to touch that B string. I'm even being super safe here using my ring finger touching the high E string just in case it got knocked around. Now you won't hear it. So now you get a really pure, clean tone that way. Here's another vibrato pro tip that the Illuminati will certainly assassinate me for as soon as they hear that I'm spreading it around. Whenever you're applying vibrato to a note, what you've got to remember is that you should always return to the pitch you started with, like this. Now, whenever your stepdad gets drunk on Natty Ice and he starts playing guitar and it sounds like this, it makes you want to cry into your pillow and then throw up into your shoes. It's because he's not returning to pitch. He's going slightly above and staying there. Ugh. The whole idea of vibrato is that we're hearing a note start off being in tune and then going slightly out of tune by going a little above or a little below, always returning to pitch. So after you give that string a little shake, whether it be by pushing it up and down with your fingers, moving it side to side with the wrist, telepathy, telekinesis, whatever. You always gotta return to the central pitch that you started with, otherwise it'll sound terrible. Let the string pull itself back to center. If you just relax your grip a little bit, the string will pull itself back to where it started. There's no reason to push it up and then force it back down into position. Just let the string do its thing, it'll end up in the right spot. The last pro tip I'm gonna lay on you here is all about rhythm. Good vibrato is kinda like good comedy. It's all about timing. So what I want you to think about whenever you're applying vibrato to a note is the pulse of the song that you're playing. This is something that I picked up by listening to a lot of singers and a lot of guitar players both who I would notice them making their vibrato pulse with the beat of the song, you know? You could listen to um, Joe Satriani in the song Flying in a Blue Dream. Awesome song, one of my favorites of his. You'll notice coming out of the chorus of that song, he's doing vibrato that's right there with the pulse of the song. Just like that. So here's the pulse of the song. 
He's trying to make his vibrato go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and just like that. Another example you could listen to is like uh, Rob Halford, the singer of Judas Priest, in the song Turbo Lover. I'm sure your stepmom has that on cassette in her Camaro. Go listen to that song. In the chorus of that song, the, the pulse of the tune is like this, and his vibrato is na 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 na. Again, reflecting the rhythm of the song like that. Now, depending on the pulse of the song here, I'm going to bring up my metronome here and show you what I'm talking about. You can do a couple of different things. Okay, so if here's my tempo, I could choose to make my vibrato go da 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 eighth notes, two and three and four and like that. Or if that's too slow, I can choose to make it go in triplets. I do triplet style vibrato all the time. Triplet, 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 triplet. Again, trying to make my vibrato reflect a rhythm and not just be some random spazzy wiggling. Now, you don't have to make it in time. There's tons of examples of good sounding vibrato that aren't in time with the music. You don't have to do it that way. It's just a cool touch if you want to add it there. One general rule of thumb though, if you're doing vibrato that's out of sync with the music, just kind of natural vibrato, you know, pick a, a, a wiggle and stay with it. If you start off at one speed, and then get drastically faster or wider with the vibrato. It just sounds like you're having a seizure when you play the guitar, it sounds terrible. So pick a rhythm, pick a speed, and stay with it. And your vibrato is always gonna sound sweet. So there you have it, ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs. Everything you've ever wanted to know about vibrato, but were just too afraid to ask. Hope that helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel on here. Also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars. And I'll catch you guys next time. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you suck at. I'm going to tell you why and help you fix it up. All right. Thanks very much. Happy shredding.